The world has become much more complex. There are many more risks which we have to address jointly as humankind. This is a time of unparalleled complexity and change. You see basic movements, uh, shifts in the world happening. What will happen if there's a pandemic and their people can't get to work? The political system suddenly is confronted with the news media that's on 24-7. When money is no longer represented by a physical object, but is simply a notation on a server, if that server should become corrupted, what happens next? Will there be another bubble in the financial market? Yes, but when, where, in which form, is something we cannot predict. We will not go back to the days of reckless behavior and unchecked excess. Pouvons pas nous permettre d'ignorer les vraies questions. The regional international mechanism we have are not adequate. And in most instances, there are no multilateral institutions that were designed to deal with that global issue. We need to think about how do we deal with these complex contingencies, how to build something, an architecture, a community that can actually respond collectively to these global risks. We can't think of currency volatility on its own. It relates to economic imbalances, it relates to trade policy, it relates to domestic politics. And all of these make these risks even more complex to deal with. We start to say, how do they connect? What is the second order effect of this risk? How is it going to impact that risk? You have global challenges where a national response is inadequate. So what do you do? Well, you've got to innovate and you've got to come up with a way to deal with these global risks. We're going to bring together our Global Agenda Councils, which are made up of well over a thousand experts from various domains, working with us on over 70 different areas of interest. Finding the right experts, bringing them in the room to start to define, identify the risk in the risk landscape, but understanding the connections. So now we have this x-ray. So what's the prescription? That really is at the heart of the risk response network. We've looked at the impact of the internet and social connectedness in Tunisia and Egypt. Most Kyrenes won't know the meaning of this English word, but enough did. Social networking is changing the world as we see it, day to day. The essence is that individual contributions now really matter. Today everybody talks about what's happening in Egypt. I started thinking about hyperconnectivity, for example, as a result of some interactions I had last year. It's not completely shocked. It's become part of what we think about, what we talk about with our clients. That's relevant. Very complex systems that they were disrupted would change our lives instantly. What if the internet shut down? What would that mean for business? What would that mean for government? Do you do a proportional shift of resources? from trying to predict the future to being prepared for the future. You know, earthquakes are a good example. Japan is one of the best prepared countries in the world, but it wasn't prepared for this. We can't predict when it'll happen. The best we can do at this time is to be able to react swiftly and quickly when it actually does happen. We're very much of the belief that if one thinks about how to think from a preventive perspective, or how to think about resilience in advance, that we can be much more effective in dealing with the next problems, the next crises that emerge. The Forum has a long history of building logistics emergency teams. We've built our disaster relief program, which has had a number of our members from the engineering and construction sector deploy resources to areas affected by natural disasters. We would like international organizations to take this risk response network seriously because of the quality of options that it produces. So risk response is not something which uh, is negative. It should be positive in creating out of the risk an opportunity. The world's getting smaller. We have to build a risk response network. There's uncertainty, but we also live in a world where there are these global shocks that you need to think about now. And you can't think about it just from the perspective of business, and you can't think about it just from the perspective of government. In fact, you have to think about it together. <laughs>